my job is to communicate to the American people True. that the Muslim world is filled with extraordinary people who simply want to live their lives and see their children live better lives. Welcome back to Inside Iraq. We are discussing perhaps the credibility deficit in the United States with Ann Somerset, Jeremy Corbyn, and Tujan Al Faisal. Jeremy Corbyn, let me ask you this following question. But before that, let me give, quote you certain figures from the worldwide Pew poll of public opinion. In 2000, uh, favorability rating in Turkey was 52%. In 2007, it's 9%. In Indonesia, in 2000, it was 75%. Now it's 29%. In Kuwait, a country that the United States helped to liberate from Iraqi occupation, was in 2000, 63%. Now it's only 46%. The question is, what can President Obama do to reverse this rising tide? He's pledged to take the troops out of Iraq, and that is welcome, although I think he also has to be aware of leaving behind huge bases and lots of security forces that would uh, carry on essentially what the current U.S. policy is. I think his decision to close Guantanamo Bay is welcome, although I would hope that's also going to be accompanied by the release of all those prisoners or a fair trial for them, though I suspect a fair trial is impossible for people that have been in prison for so long. But I'm worried about his strategy, which is saying that the real war is in Afghanistan. And by immediately sending 30,000 more troops to Afghanistan, I think the U.S. image will be, <laughs> we've uh, been in Iraq, we've got the oil out of Iraq, we're now going on to Afghanistan. And I suspect that President Obama, in one or two years' time, is going to rather regret that he's decided Afghanistan is is the major war, as he puts it, as it spills over into Pakistan, and there will be tragically, I'm sure, uh, increasing death toll amongst American and other allied forces there in Afghanistan. I would hope and I would look forward to Obama offering us a more peaceful future in the whole region, including Afghanistan. And since Jeremy mentioned the war on terror, and to a certain extent that is linked in the mind of many, especially in this part of the world, with the brutality of conducting that war. Now, why should there be a difference between Obama and Bush, uh, realizing that only about two or three days after the inauguration, the president okayed a military strike in Waziristan, in Pakistan, where many people died? So there isn't much difference, really, when it comes to the prosecution of that war between Bush and Obama. Look, I can't speak to that strike in particular, but as I said earlier, President Obama has made it very clear that he's looking to start a dialogue with the Muslim world and a constructive dialogue at that. This um, war on terror, whatever you'd like to call it, is one not between the United States and Muslims, but between the United States and some people who have essentially perverted Islam and are using it to promote terror and violence on their own. And um, that is something that hurts the entire world. It doesn't just hurt the United States. It also hurts Muslim people everywhere. To General Faisal, shouldn't we give President Obama the benefit of the doubt, let him feel his way, and let him extend this olive branch to the Muslim world, especially to the Arab world? He is a pledge to resolve the Arab-Israeli struggle. He sent a very high prominent envoy, Senator Mitchell. Well, I'm one of those who gave him um, a very wide chance. I defended him. I spoke out for him. I stayed awake all night waiting and praying that he wins the Democratic nomination and the presidency. But now I see what he's doing now. I think he's being intimidated. And this is what I wrote about after his nomination prior to his election. I said he could make it if he's not intimidated. What do you he mean intimidated? He hasn't been in office for less than 10 uh, yeah. days. Yeah, I think he, uh, prior even to his, to his accession to, to the presidency, uh, after his election, I noticed that he st they started intimidating him. Maybe they, they relied on his uh, humble background, and they relied on uh, him being young and uh, uh, not that experienced, as, as they tried to say at the beginning during the campaign. And I think, you know, I've been in politics. I've been behind the, 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 the scene, the, the screen, and I've seen what happens there. They would try to intimidate you. There is an establishment of white wealthy people and I think he did the mistake of including some of them especially the Mrs. Clinton as his Secretary Excuse of State. That being the case, let me, ask that, let me ask that to Jeremy. Jeremy, 
uh, is it is it your impression or is it your understanding that regardless who sits in in the Oval Office, eventually he has to toe the American policies, whether it's Obama from a liberal background or whether it's a Bush in the far right? There is an incredibly powerful military establishment in the USA guided by a self-interested security apparatus in the USA. They set themselves on this war on terror in 2001 and failed to understand that dropping cluster bombs, depleted uranium, uh, and all the other horrors of the war in Iraq, not just the current Iraq war, but the Gulf War in the past, bombing villages in Pakistan, bombing villages in Afghanistan, is just as much terror for those people there, even if it's done in the name of the United States or Britain or any other country. And I think Obama is under enormous pressure, and I can understand the pressure that he's under. But I hope that with the massive mandate he's got, and he really owes his election to his opposition to the Iraq war in the first place. He would not have got the Democratic nomination without that opposition. I look to him to a real redirection of U.S. foreign policy. Now, that may well happen, partly because he might want it, but also I suspect that the enormous economic difficulties of the United States and to some extent in Europe will mean that there'll be less appetite for spending all this money uh, on these kind of wars because they are very, very expensive. But he's got to make a fundamental change. Switching troops from Iraq to Afghanistan is not a fundamental change. Backing up Israel despite the bombing of Gaza is not a fundamental change. First, I think it's ridiculous to assert that President Obama is being intimidated. He's the President of the United States. He's the Commander-in-Chief of our military forces. He sets our foreign policy, and he is not being intimidated. That's ridiculous. Um, he has, again, as I've said numerous times, made it very clear that he is looking to start a dialogue with the Muslim world based on mutual respect and understanding. And he's also made it very clear that he doesn't expect us to always agree. We won't always agree, but we will talk respectfully. And violence, terrorism, is not going to help anyone. And speaking about Gaza in particular, um, I, I think we need to be very clear that this is not about Israel going in and bombing Gaza. This is about Hamas continuing to reject peace. This is Hamas continuing to unilaterally decide to lob rockets into its neighboring country, Israel. But Anne, uh, and I think it's really a shame that Hamas in Gaza. has not decided. I am aware of that, Excellent. and it's terrible but Anne, that come Hamas on. has not decided Hamas and to its put, the, rockets put, the, are... put the benefits of the Palestinian people first. This is ridiculous. Okay, Hamas um, has known for some time what it needs to do to be part of the peace process. Continue, for Jeremy. For ages, the and quartet has the, offered The issue them. is, surely, yes. that Israel has lobbed rockets, grenades, phosphorus bombs, all that into Gaza, killed mm -hmm. 1,300 people, seriously injured 5,000. And whilst I regret the deaths of anybody, the parallel deaths of 13 people in Israel is hardly proportionate. What we look to is some serious control over what Israel does. And since the US is the biggest donor look. to the Israeli economy and biggest political support, I would hope they're going to put some real pressure on them to come to the table, look. both sides to come to the table. And I wish George Mitchell well in that. But there has to be some serious condemnation of what Israel has done. These are acts of war. These are probably going to end up before the International Criminal Court. Let me get a quick response oh, look, from uh, Tujan before I finish <laughs> the program. If Bush was able to do that much evil, I think Obama should be able to do as much good. But he isn't. He's mixing issues, and we should remind him that the people of America uh, elected him for what he is. They did not elect anybody belonging to the, the previous establishment, not just concerning external, internal politics, but external Th politics. Thank because you, Because if Jan. we talk about the economy, the Clinton administration was better off, but we are talking foreign uh, policies too. I'd like to just confirm that Israel was not unilaterally just launching bombs into Gaza. Hamas has sent many, many rockets into Israel after many, many offers by the international community for Hamas to join the peace process. They have continued to reject them. It is Hamas that is responsible for the welfare of the Palestinian people in Gaza, and I hope they start taking that seriously. The one He's reservation about uh, President Obama and that uh, during uh, the onslaught, although he was not a president yet, but he was very, very silent. Final question, Jeremy Corbyn. America is standing plummeted because of Iraq, as you mentioned. Now Iraq is pretty much on the road to recovery. Will that eventually 
put the image of the United States at the top one more time? No, I don't think it will because the uh, memory of Iraq, the memory of the awful slaughter that went on during the invasion and all the human rights abuses that followed are not going to go away anytime soon. What we need is a rejection of the notion of the war on terror and instead let's look to a world where we eliminate hatred by eliminating inequalities and maximizing respect. Now I welcome some of what President Obama said in his inaugural address. It was very, it was very fine words indeed but to carry those out by bombing in Afghanistan and Pakistan Pakistan and not putting the pressure that he's capable of putting on Israel to defend the people of Gaza, that is not a very good start. Jeremy Corbyn and Somerset to Jan Faisal, thank you for being guests on Inside Iraq. To access the show and to send us your comments, please go to aljazeera.net forward slash English. We have reached the end of this show for this week. Join me next week when we take another look inside Iraq. Until then, goodbye.